It's the beginning of a new week and we've got plenty to bring you over the next five days, starting with a look at why it could be in Europe's interest to increase the price of CO2 allowances instead of focusing predominantly on subsidising so-called green energy. Well, on the line is Jacob Magnusson of Danske Markets, whose main role is to keep a watchful eye on everything utilities related in Europe. Mr Magnusson, welcome to Dukas Copy TV. Now, we know many countries in Europe are ploughing money into green energy, such as wind and solar, for example. But you're saying they should stop that and instead start raising the cost of CO2 allowances. Now, why do you say that, given green energy can surely only be a good thing for our environment? Well, it's a, it's a long story, but uh, to make it short, um, Right now, we're seeing uh, a massive switch in the way we produce power from our thermic capacity uh, from gas-fired power plants into coal-fired power plants. Um, and that part of, of, of that uh, is, is based on the very low price on polluting in Europe right now. So that's the price of CO2 emissions allowances. Um, gas is a relatively more clean fuel than coal is. Uh, and when it is free to pollute, utilities tend to, to, to choose the cheaper of the two fuel types, which is coal. Uh, and when it's free to pollute, then they won't choose the cleaner of the two fuel types, which is gas. So they choose to fire on coal-fired power plants, and then they lay the gas-fired power plants idle. And that is actually driving up the CO2 fit footprint in Europe. Um, instead, what the politicians in the EU are doing for the environment is that they are promoting green investments, such as wind energy and solar energy, uh, by via subsidies. So, so what every utility is doing right now is that they're investing heavily in solar and in wind energy, and on the flip side, they are also firing up on their coal-fired power plants instead of firing on their gas-fired power plants. So the 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 environmental gain we get for the environment from from firing on wind and solar panel that is offset by a, a environmental loss, if you like, on firing on gas-fired, uh, sorry, firing on coal-fired power plants instead of gas-fired power plants. And that's a problem, I think. Okay, let's look at power prices in Europe as they stand now. Why have we seen a gradual lowering of prices in this sector recently? Well, uh, there's three explanations for that. The, the biggest being, of course, the, the aftermath of the financial crisis, um, which has driven down the economic activity overall in Europe uh, and also led to some sort of uh, removal of production from Europe to third world countries and, and regions such as, as Asia, China, India. Um, so that has, that has driven down the demand for power overall. But also the, the commodities prices coal and gas prices and also the price of CO2 has, uh, has been falling in recent years. So that has made the marginal cost of power production fall as well. And that has also driven down the price of, of power prices. Which utilities then uh, are being impacted by these low prices, Mr Magnusson? Well, that's, uh, that's basically everybody, uh, all the utilities uh, and all the activities within the utilities, except for the ones uh, deploying or producing power from solar or wind power. Uh, and wind power and solar, as I mentioned before, is only profitable because of the heavy subsidies given by the various governments. So basically everybody is suffering, but the one suffering the most is the ones with the biggest thermal footprints, so production from coal and, and gas fire power plants. Finally, looking ahead, how might an environment where the majority of energy comes from renewables over gas affect energy-intensive companies? Well, I think that, uh, generally speaking, it's a good theme for the, for the energy-intensive companies in Europe because this, this whole theme is keeping the power price low in Europe. Uh, the, the negative outcome, if you like, uh, could be that we'll see a much more volatile power price in Europe because... As it is right now, we have a lot of baseload production from, from coal plants and nuclear power plants. But in the future, that will be partly offset by a higher degree of volatile power productions from wind and solar. 
obviously only producing power when the wind is blowing or the sun is shining. So you will need to see a lot more power hedges going forward for the energy intensive industrials in Europe. Okay, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. Thank you for joining me. On tomorrow's Commodities Corner, I'll be looking at the latest on grains. But for now, goodbye.